Now the trick is to get him to want to go in this tube on his own. <laughs> that can take a, a few attempts usually. Now that's not what I want you to do, buddy. Now it's real tempting sometimes to want to put my hand down there and help him go in the tube. But as you see, he can pull his head out of that tube really quick and strike even quicker. So the further I can get him up in here, the safer I'm going to be. Oh, and he's back out again. Alright, so let's not do that. It's okay, buddy. We're going to be gentle with you. This tube is not all that bad. I've never been in one, but I don't think it is. <laughs> I'm trying my best to keep his head in the tube. Try my best not to get bit. And then trying to keep him in the tube. <laughs> in that order. Let's not do that, buddy. Come on now. Come on. But <laughs> that's what rattlesnakes do. He's not being aggressive. He's just defending himself. Aggression would be him coming over here to get me. As long as I keep myself outside of the strike range, then uh, he's okay with that. There we go. Oh, now he's uh, spraying some musk out of his tail. He does not like going in this tube. But we've got him in there. This rattlesnake is now safely contained in this tube, and I can handle him and examine him. Ah! Oh, God! He just shot musk in my face. Uh, give me something. Mm. It didn't go in my mouth. It didn't go in my mouth. But it went on my chin and my shirt uh, and all of the tube. Uh, that's, the, that's disgusting. Uh. Alright, so <laughs> I've got this snake safely contained. Uh, oh! Stop it! That is absolutely disgusting. Ah. Ah. All right. Point your tail that way. Let's, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help you point it that way. All right. So this rattlesnake is contained in this tube, and I can safely hold him this way. Um, the tube is long enough to where he can't exit out that end and he can't back out of it because I'm holding a tube and part of his body. So in this position, I can safely handle this rattlesnake. I cannot safely handle this rattlesnake without being musked on. What is musk? Well, a lot of snakes have musk. And it's these glands right under there, the cloaca, and they can, as you just saw, <laughs> they can spray this musk out and it stinks. And it's designed to make me want to put the rattlesnake down. And it's just about working, okay, because it doesn't smell good, especially when it hits you in the face. This is a male timber rattlesnake. This is one that was actually just recently captured and uh, does not like me very much at all. <laughs> but that's okay because this rattlesnake is actually about to be released tomorrow. Now, before I release it, I just want to show you. Um, this rattlesnake is not very, very thick as far as rattlesnakes go. See right here where my hand is, okay? The head is there, and the tail is right back down here. About right here where my hand is, is generally where the stomach of this snake is at. Now, why that's important is because when this snake eats a rat or a chipmunk or squirrel, whatever he eats, he's gonna have a bulge in him. And that bulge is gonna be about halfway down the snake, about where my hand is right there, okay? Now, if you notice, 
beyond my hand toward the tail, the snake is pretty thin. I mean, it's not really the thickest part is up in up in this area here, and right here, this area is not all that thick. Okay, don't point your musky hand toward me. Let's point it that way toward the camera. Okay, so that's what a typical rattlesnake looks like and now i want to show you what a gravid female looks like gravid is just another word for a snake being pregnant okay but we call it gravid in snakes well, that was much easier than the male <laughs> Now we've got the female safely contained in this tube. She went in a lot easier than the male did. This female was actually just captured today. Now when people see snakes in the wild and they just leave the snake where it is, it's obviously better for the snake. Um, but that's not always possible, especially if it shows up you know, right near your back door. And so instead of the snake being killed, sometimes people call us out to come remove the snake. And that's what's happened here. Now, the homeowner was especially grateful that we removed this snake because this is a gravid female. Now, let me show you. Remember the, the male rattlesnake? And I said about right here where my hand is, is where the stomach would be. So if this ate a big meal, a rat or whatever, there would be a big lump right here in this part of the snake. And there's not, there's not really a big lump there. But what we do see in this snake, I don't know if you can see it really good on here, but let me see if I can show you this. This snake, from a, just this side of my hand here, back to where this hand is, this snake is really, really thick. And this part of the snake right here, the head's way up here. This part of the snake way down here, that's babies. And so how many babies are in there? I don't know. Uh, usually about 10 or so but I've seen timber rattlesnakes have as many as 20. Now, it is amazing what goes on in the life of a female timber rattlesnake. So let me paint a picture here for you. As this female is ready to breed, she doesn't go looking for a, for a man, okay? She makes the, the, the boy snake come find her. So what she does, she spends her time foraging and looking for food, meandering around throughout her habitat because she's going to build up her body weight in order to be able to care for her and grow her young in her body. So she's meandering through the forest, you know, looking for chipmunks and squirrels and rats and whatever else she can find. And as she's doing this, she's not just crawling in a straight line, she's just going and following the scent trails of prey. Well, the male that wants to breed this female has no idea where she's at. So what he does, he begins to crawl in a straight line. Sometimes for miles. If there's something in his way, he goes around it and pretty much gets back on track on that same straight line and continues to search. When he finally crosses the path, of her pheromone trail, her scent trail that she's leaving, he then begins to follow that trail to her. Now, when mating does occur, usually for timber rattlesnakes here in the southeast, it's in late summer. And when mating occurs, the female usually stores the sperm in her body and does not fertilize her eggs with it. Then fall comes, then winter comes, then spring comes, and now the female still has that stored sperm and her eggs are ready to be fertilized. So she releases the sperm, the eggs are fertilized, and now she's considered gravid or pregnant for about three months. And then a year after she first bred with the male, late summer, she's gonna give birth, live birth. They don't lay eggs, they have live birth. And she can have anywhere from you know eight or nine, 10 babies, sometimes as many as 20 live rattlesnakes and when those rattlesnakes are born they're going to hang around for about a week until they shed their skin for the first time during that time this mama rattlesnake she's probably hanging out with them not necessarily to protect the babies 
but it's more thought that she's kind of worn out from giving birth and she's just there recuperating. And it's been observed as the mom is there with her babies, these little baby rattlesnakes have been seen rubbing their heads up against the female rattlesnake, flicking their tongues all over her. And it's thought they're trying to basically memorize what she smells like. So in the fall, when she's traveling to the winter den to, to beat the winter and stay warm and not freeze to death, she releases more pheromones. And those juvenile rattlesnakes that have been out foraging looking for their first meals can pick up on her scent trail and follow her to wherever they need to spend the winter. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's just amazing. Less than half of all female timber rattlesnakes will even live long enough in their lifetime to breed. And timber rattlesnakes in the wild typically don't give birth until they're about at least eight years old or so. Now in captivity, you can breed a timber rattlesnake earlier than that. But in the wild, it's generally thought they're at least eight years old, sometimes 10 or 11 or 12 years old before the female gives birth for the first time. And then after she gives birth, she probably won't do it again for at least two years, if not three or four years. Recovery from pregnancy for a rattlesnake can sometimes take years. If this rattlesnake were to give birth three or even four times in her lifetime, that's really doing something. Now, as she finds a place that she wants to have her babies, it's gotta be a place that keeps her safe, where she can hide from predators, a place where she can cool down, but she can also slide out into the sun to warm up and help incubate those young inside of her. Now she's gonna spend the summer there. And at some point, she's gonna just stop eating. But she will travel from her hideout to maybe look for water. But even that is usually done at night when there's less chance of predators hunting her down and seeing her. So these timber rattlesnakes are absolutely amazing. You know, most people see a rattlesnake like this and just think of the damage it can do and how dangerous these snakes are. And they are dangerous and they can do a lot of damage. But there's a lot of good that rattlesnakes do too. You know, one researcher found that one timber rattlesnake can consume more than 5,000 ticks in one year. Yes, ticks. Now, <laughs> this rattlesnake is not crawling around hunting and you know eating individual ticks, but what they did was they looked at the prey that rattlesnakes eat and they counted how many ticks on average are on those prey items. And they found out that more than 5,000 ticks a year are consumed by just one timber rattlesnake. But that's not even the best thing about, about rattlesnakes. You know, there's a lot of medications that are being manufactured from proteins only found in snake venom. Just because we may not understand or agree with a certain part of nature doesn't give us a God-given responsibility to destroy it.